Blessings. I want to come to you today and share with you from the word of God as we continue to grow in the word. Listen, we want to make sure that our spirits are still in fit and in shape during this time. Today, I want to talk to you about maintaining your mission. I know someone is saying, hey, the world has stopped. Uh, my mission is gone. No, this is the perfect time to figure out what your mission is and to make sure you focus it and refine it. And we want to know what does a mission look like for those of us who are connected to God. So I want to call your attention to Luke chapter two, verses 41 through 52. Luke 2, 41 this is how my Bible reads. It says, now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But when they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances, and when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. And after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, son, why have you treated me so or treated us so? And behold, your father, I've been searching for you. And he said to them, why are you looking for me? Didn't you know I had to be about my father's business? Maintain your mission. Listen, it's so easy to become distracted. I mean, we live in a distracted time. Uh, this whole thing, this pandemic is distracting. I mean, we can hardly focus without picking up our phones. That's confession is good for the soul, bad for the reputation. Soon as one thing goes on, our attention is switched here and there and everywhere. Uh, this, this whole pandemic we're in, it seems like it's a huge distraction. But consider this, maybe God allows distractions for us to realign and even reaffirm our real commitment. What this may seem to be totally distracting and getting us off course, maybe God is using this to help you to realign and reaffirm what really matters and our commitments that really mean something to God. So let's consider what's, what's the big point, what's the big idea of this passage? I believe it speaks to us this way. Our ultimate life's aim is tied to our commitment to the Lord. Can you say that? Is your main aim connected to God? I, I know you want a relationship, but do you want the relationship to be God honoring? I know you want a promotion, but if you got the promotion, would it be God honoring? Can God get glory? Oftentimes, most of our aim and our mission and our goals and our aspirations has us at the center, me, my, I. But is God at the center of your aims and missions and ambitions? So what does this text teach? The text teaches us first that we must have a God awareness. Notice verses 41 through 42. Jesus' parents was taking them to the temple for the Passover where they celebrated how God delivered his people when the death angel was going through Egypt. They had a deep God awareness. Listen, does what we do begin middle and end with God? They, they, they are going to worship God. But then also the Passover, the celebration had stopped. They are headed back home. But the text tells us that Jesus stayed there with the teachers. That's a God attachment. Many of us have an awareness of God. But do you have an attachment to God? Sometimes our attachment to God is only based on what we see. 
And after celebration and worship and singing has ceased or, when, or once we are uh, no longer getting what we desire from God, our attachment to God dwindles. So we see Jesus, he stays, he's attached. He wants to move beyond celebration and he wants to grow in the area of maturation and understanding of God. Then verses 44 through 48. We see the guardian's assumption. They leave and they thought Jesus was with them. Hmm. Doesn't that sound like us? Many of us, we're going on about our lives and we are presupposing, assuming, if you will, that God is with us. His parents got it wrong. They had gone a day's journey and didn't realize Jesus was not even with them. May I ask you a question today? Can you say for sure God is with you? God is at the center of your affections, your aims. I know we have some consistencies, but is God a part of your ultimate worldview and how you interpret life and your understanding of what success really looks like? Many of us, we're moving and grooving. We're having success and we assume that God is with us. That's a major assumption. We need to make sure that we know that God is with us. And then there's a, a godly acknowledgement. There's a godly acknowledgement. Look at verse 49 through 51. And he said to them, why are you looking for me? He said, didn't you know I had to be about my father's business? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke. Jesus says, listen, I know you're looking for me, but I'm doing something that's greater than even what you all thought I should be about. That, that's when you really know when you can say, I am about God's mission. God's mission is always attached to something larger than ourselves. Jesus didn't say, I'm doing my own thing. This is about me. In the words of Frank Sinatra, I'm, I'm living life my way. He, he says, I must be about my father's business. So let's see if we can apply this passage. What does this text mean for us? Let me give you the first principle. First principle is this. Our awareness of God is often influenced by introductions. This, this is a question we ought to ask ourselves. Who introduced you to God? Maybe it's your mother, your father. We, we forget about that. Fathers introduce individuals to God. Maybe it was a Sunday school teacher. Maybe it was a coach. Maybe it was some distant family member, a pastor at a summer camp. Who introduced you to God? Sometimes we need to recall the people who first gave us our introductions to God. I'm grateful. My mother was my first person who introduced me to God. She was my Sunday school teacher. She gave me a God awareness. And then th this is the second question. What was your first authentic God encounter when you know all oh, the light went on, an awareness went on that, you know, oh, this God thing is real. Our awareness of God is often tied to introductions. There are some Andrews in our lives. That's a disciple in the Bible that introduced people to Jesus. Listen, all of us need an Andrew in our lives Two. God is so good, we should desire to be in a perpetual position of learning. That's what we learn from Jesus. He said, I, I just don't want celebration. I want maturation. He, he, he says, I want to stay in perpetual pursuit. Psalm 119, 103 teaches us your teachings are sweeter than honey. When we learn God's word for our lives, it's sweeter. Now, sometimes it's tough, but life gets better when we know God intimately beyond just celebration. Then Acts 9 tells us, reminds us, after Saul, who we know as Paul, has his road of Damascus experience, the text says he connected himself to the disciples. Listen, he connected himself to them, just not for fellowship, but he connected himself so he could learn. What does God attachment look like? It means personal time with God. This is a great time to say, hey, I'm going to devote 10, 15, 20 minutes of my day with God. Listen, you can't survive this without spending some time with God. Then worship. 
Take time to worship God with community of believers. Right now is e-worship, but when this passes, make sure you make the concerted effort to be in the company with the saints. Growing with other believers, that's life group, Sunday school. Who can you talk to about what God is doing in your life or what you hope God is doing or how you understand God? The third principle is this. Seasonal separation is a reality for spiritual growth and potential. Jesus even had to distance himself from his parents. Wow, that's huge. Because we say this all the time, uh, uh, blood is thicker than water. But sometimes we have to separate ourselves from the people and the things we know the most so we can grow in God so we can meet our potential. Listen, maybe use this time of separation and social distancing so you can grow in God. One of the hardest lessons I had to learn as I grew up is the dynamics change when our spiritual palate becomes more complex. Sometimes when you grow in God, you can't afford to keep the same company. But when you have a palate for God, everybody does not have that same desire. This is a great season to engage in meaningful conversations of what God is doing in the world, and what God is doing in your life. Often remember this, Jesus is sitting there Raising question to the teachers. Listen, sometimes the answer is not in how much, you know, sometimes the greatest answers are in the question. Five, personal development can be painful to others. Listen, Jesus, mother and father is looking for him. They are tortured. They are upset. They looking for him and they are so upset. She said, listen, why would you do such an egregious, such a painful, such a complex thing to us that cause us to be torn apart? Listen, sometimes when you grow in God, other people can't handle it. Conversations change. The phone calls stop. Sometimes the things that you used to do, you don't do as much. Sometimes you have to realize it's painful to others, but it may be saving your life. Six. Authentic missions. Are always God centered. I want to tell somebody and this ought to be a reminder to us. Life has to be more than more than about us. Life is more than about your dreams, your goals, your aspirations, your savings account, your sexual desires, your relational needs. Listen, life is more about more than about us. Listen, we have to stop making ourselves as the center because you will never find satisfaction until God, until God is at the center of our lives. And this is the question today is, is your dream God influence? If you can't find God in it, it may not be of God. Is it God influence? How? This is the question. How do I know my mission is God centered? I'm glad you asked. You're asking all the right questions. First, is it in alignment with God's word? God is never going to say or give you something that contradicts his word. Is it in alignment with God's word? Does it lift other people? Does it extend assistance to others? Listen, all men know that we are disciples, that we have love one for another. Listen, if your mission doesn't help other people, it may not be large enough. Second, it's always larger than you. It should require partnership and fellowship with others. And then, you know, it's a good mission when it can motivate you in spite of hardships. I want to ask somebody, is what God has planted in you, does it still make you get up? It may be hard, but does it still make you get up in the morning? I know you're at home by yourself, but does it make you move when nobody's looking over your shoulder? Does it give you a sense of excitement and God awareness? And then I like how the text ends. This is how you maintain your mission. In verse 52, it says, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature. And in favor with God and man. Listen, if you go maintain your mission, you have to keep growing. You have to keep growing physically. Exercise. You have to grow emotionally, 
Learn how to get along with other people. Grow intellectually. Continue to learn. Be a, a, a whale that's always trying to receive. Listen, make sure you keep growing. We are never beyond the point of learning. And this is the final word. We never get to a point where we ace God. So maintain your mission. Make sure that there is a God awareness, a God attachment. Make sure that you're not assuming God is with you. And finally, make sure that there is a godly acknowledgement that you can get up every day and say, I am about my father's business. Let's pray and ask God to plant this seed in the soil of your life. Lord, we thank you that we learn from your son, Jesus Christ, how we maintain our mission. Help us, God, to ensure that our mission grows beyond us and that in all things that you get glory and satisfaction out of what we do. Help us to help others and let our light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify you who are who is always in heaven. In Jesus name we pray and everybody said amen. God bless you. May the Lord be with you on behalf of New Hope Baptist Church. We are continuously praying with you and for all of you. We're here at New Hope where we are building faith and sharing love. May the Lord be with you.